afternoon everyone. Um, I'm Janice Young, Service Manager in the Peripatetic Team. Um, welcome to our webinar this afternoon where we're hoping to have a discussion around your, your wellbeing and how we can best support you during this um, COVID-19 crisis. I'm joined this afternoon by Karen Bell from Human Resources and Dr uh, Judith Marshall who's a GP and uh, Claire O'Neill who's um, a palliative care nurse. So um, hopefully between us we can help to answer some of your questions. Um, we've got again a list of questions that people have submitted to us. Um, we'll try and rattle our way through them. But if there are other extra questions that you want to ask then maybe just wave at me or raise your hand so that we can get an idea of who you are and we'll, we'll try and factor that in as well. We've probably got about 45 minutes to, just to, under the hour to be able to uh, get through as many questions as we possibly can. If we don't have the answers to everything then we'll absolutely make a commitment to come back to you with, with, with that as well. So I'm going to start off by looking at some of the human resources related questions if that's okay. Um, and as I say we've got Karen here from HR. So there's a, a few of the units have asked questions about additional breaks and getting time off the floor for, for um, comfort breaks while they're on shift. So Karen, I don't know if you want to pick that up first. Yeah, I mean, in terms of having breaks, I mean, I suppose to a certain extent what you would really do just now, um, or what you would do in sort of normal, normal circumstances, if you feel as if you need to have time out, then, then obviously you would make arrangements um, with, your, with, your, um, with your peers. Um, to, to, to try and allow that to happen so that you can have that break um, and time off shift and, and I would really just suggest that that, that, that you know that that, that would um, continue um, uh, you know in terms of obviously you know you, there's a certain amount of staff that are that are um, on shift at any particular um, time uh, but um, you know, obviously, um, you know, you will already have breaks um, that, that are in place. So um, it's just really continuing on, on, on that basis. Um, and it's really um, linking in with your operational manager uh, and service manager around that. Yeah. And I think in, in addition to that, it's, it's you know yourself and you know the stress that you're under right now. And if you're finding that it's, things are getting on top of you, that you need a, you need extra time, or you need a bit of a break, then then have then just say say to your senior in duty, say to the ops manager, come to the service manager. This is extraordinary times, and I think we need to be as flexible as we can about that. And thinking about space, it might be that you actually just want to get outside for a bit of fresh air, or that you actually want to spend a bit of time on your own, or actually you might want to spend time talking to one another. There'll never be a one size fits all, so it's, it's thinking about that. I don't know, uh, Judith, if there are things that you're doing within the healthcare settings to support one another around breaks. Um, not specifically through breaks. We do um, speak to each other at half eight and half twelve every day, and we know at that time that we can kind of offload any problems that we're having or um, support each other. In the care homes that I work in, we've had a really busy last maybe five days and I know that the staff are taking extra breaks just to get some fresh air and I think they don't feel as able to maybe go, I think they're not meant to go down and be with the whole of the care home staff all together on grouped breaks so they're finding that a little bit difficult trying to time breaks so that they're not all hanging around together. Um, but just maybe more in your teams that are working together. Um, that's what we're doing anyway. Okay, is there anyone got any extra questions they want to ask around the breaks or time out just now before we move on to the next question? No. Oh. Linda, did you have a question or was that just a wave? <laughs> just a wave. <laughs> Okay, another question that relates about how you get to work at the moment is that some folks are experiencing difficulty using their public transport. I know, I know buses are down to skeleton services in some areas and things like that. And so this is maybe a question about your conditions as an employee. Is there any help available to help staff get to work just now that you're aware of, Karen? I'm not aware 
um, of anything just now. It's certainly something I can take back and, and, and find a little bit more about. Um, I only know just what you've said, Janice, in mm -hmm. terms of in terms of bus timetables and, and train timetables. Uh, um, you know, the, 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 it's a lot less now, so which obviously um, will make it more uh, tricky for staff trying to get into to, to work. Um, but it's certainly something I can I can take back and, mm -hmm. and see if there's anything else that we can share at this time. Yeah. The only thing I would ask folks to do is maybe have a word with your manager if you've got a particular problem around that and they could start to collate a, a list of, of what that issue is and then, look, then they could potentially look at a solution to that to see if there's a, a way around it, either using a combination of our, our minibus transport and, and anything else that we might be able to get across the, the wider council, if you, if you like, to be able to support that. Um, because folks need to be able to get to work, um, absolutely. Um, another area that's around, um, almost a bit, going back a bit to breaks, is around um, staff in Medivorn had felt that they, they're missing the company of one another during their handovers and breaks because of the social distancing and potentially having to take breaks on their own and asking for advice about that. I, I, I'm going to turn to yourself, Jude, because I think that's maybe something that you're already tackling mm -hmm. within the other care homes in the hospital settings. Yeah, so there's probably two ways of dealing with your breaks, isn't there? There's you either want to talk to each other and support each other and hear what everybody's going through, but equally sometimes you don't want to talk to it. <laughs> well, I don't know, maybe that's just me. <laughs> uh, but when I go home, I don't necessarily want to tell my husband what my day was like. I really just want to think about other things. So um, I think you've got to do what suits you. And if you need to break away from people, you go outside or you go somewhere where other people aren't going to be. Then maybe within your units, you kind of put a few minutes aside every day if you can, just to speak to each other. Because this situation is not anything that we've all been through before. I mean, even in our care homes when we've had deaths that were maybe unexpected, you know, we've we've sat down and we've kind of debriefed about it and we've said, God, you know, that was a real shock. Was there any signs? Was there anything we could have done differently? You know, we tried our best. So we definitely reflect on things. But when things are happening and so many people seem to be unwell, and um, that certainly my experience at the moment, it's probably even more important that we sit down and we say, look, we're all trying our very best right now. You know, like, I don't know about you, but I'm not sleeping properly, I'm not speaking to my friends as much as I do, I'm not probably de-stressing as much as I would like to do. So your work colleagues are probably the people you're seeing most outside the people you live with. And so just trying to support each other, listen to each other, encourage each other and just remember that we're all trying as the hardest that we can and unfortunately with this pandemic we can't, um, we can't prevent people becoming unwell and we can't prevent people sadly dying, but we've got to look after each other because if we don't look after each other, we can't look after other people to the best of our abilities. So I do think I'm a big believer in talking about things um, to my work colleagues. As I say, my husband's are not really quite as supportive, but my work colleagues are great. So um, yeah, just talking, I would say. Mm -hmm. We've been trying something in, in the hospital palliative care teams and it's a COVID buddy system and it's really just because we're finding that if you, we're, we're going around the wards and we're reviewing COVID positive patients all, most of the day, um, so we've tended to try and each morning pair people up and what we'd be looking for those pairs to do is really just check in with each other and it is about checking in that each and other are comfortable with how to take on, to put on and take off PPE. So that's part of what the COVID buddy would do, would just support and check that people are doing that okay. But they'd also check that that person's eating and drinking okay as well and stopping for breaks and looking after themselves in work and out of work and then checking in with that person at the end of the day um, before they leave as well. So we've tried, to, certainly in the palliative care teams, we've tried to look at the COVID buddy system and I noticed it was one of those things that I, I'd suggested, but I wasn't sure 
how people would feel about it, but I've actually noticed, even this morning, I've come from the Queen Elizabeth and the palliative care team there, they said we've all managed to find a buddy today, they've buddied up and they were uh, been able to, so they won't go and see, necessarily see patients in twos, but they're supporting each other throughout the day and they're checking in with each other throughout the day. Um, I don't know about yourselves, but I would say for the past six weeks, I felt that every day has felt like two days. Mm -hmm. It's not that, you know, there's no, it, it's more around, I just feel there's so much going on every day and there's so much new coming through in the news and so much coming through for us to read on emails and things that actually I just feel that the days are so, so full on that actually you really need somebody in work to check that you're okay. Um, we need to find our way of switching off as well, out of work, but we'll come to that. But when you're in work, it is about a buddy within work to check in with. Mm -hmm. Is that something you think might be possible? I think that's a really good suggestion, actually. I think it's something that we can, we can certainly take that on board and take a look at that and, and see how that could work for us. That's, that's great. Thanks, Claire. And just another sort of technical question around um, how we can support staff at uh, this, sort of, this time. Victoria Gardens had asked a question about where there's confirmed cases. Are there arrangements that could be put in place so that staff don't have to return home to their families? Now, I'm reading that to mean that that, that would be a, providing them an alternative accommodation to avoid needing to go home. I guess the first question around that is, is there a, is, would there be a clinical reason that they should distance themselves from their families at a time like this? Um, if we could maybe I'll ask uh, our health professionals again to give us some advice on that in the first instance. From our point of view, we are looking after people who are COVID positive and, and we're still going home. I think we talked through last week about the importance of PPE, hand washing, not touching your face and changing your clothes. Um, but other than that, we're still going home to the our houses with our families as well. So um, even if we're looking after people who are COVID positive, I think that's right, isn't it? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. So we're continuing to come to work and go home from work um, and that will continue unless you know, we were to become uh, symptomatic but um, even after having spent the day looking after people with COVID uh, symptoms um, who are either suspected or positive then the focus for us is very much on making sure that we're putting on our PPE correctly and then taking it off correctly, and then just the hand washing stuff that you that's so important, but that you all know about. And then if there is, I know we spoke about different polo shirts and uniforms and different things last time, and uh, there's, at the moment, I think some of you wear polo shirts and the majority in your own clothes. Yeah. So I said, just th I was thinking about it after we'd been on last week and I was thinking about uh, options for yourselves and whether or not it's possible if you could bring, you know, come to work, say in something, you know, like leggings or whatever's comfortable, come to work in that, have your work clothes, wear your work clothes and then before you leave, take them off, put them in the bag the way we're doing. So we're putting them into either a pillowcase or a disposable bag but the way I do it is put it into like a laundry pillowcase so that I just go home and put that straight into the machine and obviously wash it at 60 degrees so I suppose if you're wearing your own clothes can you take those clothes off put them into a laundry bag and then get changed into your outdoor clothes again for going out and it would mean then you're just washing your work clothes separately um, at the highest temperature possible and then either tumble drying or ironing them um, if you if if that might be an option and certainly that's what we're doing with uniforms as well we're all i think we spoke about this last time as well because we're all washing our hair a lot more often than we normally would because the advice is to it's pretty much as, as soon as i go in the door i can't go straight for a shower because i've got kids and they would you know they'd be like desperate to see you so the first thing i do is take my jacket off wash my hands um, but then fairly quickly try and go and get a shower as well 
Um, some people I know that I work with, they go straight in and go straight into the shower. Um, but it's just what works for your own family. The kids would follow me upstairs into the shower and I wouldn't get peace otherwise. <laughs> Thanks very much, Claire. Are there any extra questions around that before we move on? No. I guess it's another question that actually links back to the family members and taking the, the uh, potentially taking the virus home, I guess, is that um, it's actually came up in a couple of the units is that there's they may have a family member who has a high risk um, underlying health condition. So how how do you support that member that member of your own family at a time when you're be, uh, doing this as doing your day job as well? So um, I, again, probably looking to yourselves for that one. Well, I think everything that Claire has said is the way to protect the, your family member. Um, and then we also talked about last week about if you've got a family member who's shielding at home, is just trying to um, keep your distance from them. Ideally, have different bedrooms, use the kitchen at different times, bathrooms at different times, um, different cutlery, towels, all those kind of things. But that's the advice I would give to all my patients who are shielding at home so no matter what their family member works as um, that's their advice and that that's been sent out by the chief medical officer to them and that's the advice they should follow so as long as you're washing your hands changing your clothes and wearing ppe then that i think that's the best way that you can protect your family members do you agree Claire? yeah yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. so any additional questions about that because i, I think that is quite a it almost feels like a contradiction that you're working with people with potentially COVID and you've got someone who's very high risk at home who's been asked to shield. So I can understand why staff would find that quite contradictory to work their head around. So um, does that help people? Um, yeah. Okay. So I guess that what to dedicate a fair bit of time today is in terms of how people are coping with this is a really anxious time and how um how what can they do to help alleviate that and, and see the signs in what each other and in themselves so again asking yourself yeah. Jude and Claire if you could give us a wee overview of what, what your the latest advice is there so I do lots of well-being stuff out with this pandemic and um when I think about keeping well um in general which I know, listen, I'm taking this all with a pinch of salt because I'm not following all my own advice all the time at the moment, but the things that I kind of think about are trying to sleep well, eat well, trying to relax and enjoy yourself, um, trying to move a little, and um, that sense of belonging and the sense of community. So you've got that in your workplace and probably in your community at home that when you belong to something and you're helping other people, it should make you feel very proud of yourself and that you should be giving yourself a pat on the back for the hard work that you all do. I mean, we all do it as well, like Claire and I are still looking after patients as well, so it's hard to sometimes say to yourself, well done, but actually you guys are looking after the frailest um, patients in Glasgow and you're doing an amazing job looking after them. Um, I think it's important that uh, you acknowledge that and you appreciate that in yourself. Um, doing things or relaxing and doing things that you enjoy. So I've been lot, watching a lot of box sets because as I say, by the way, don't tell my husband, but if I don't want to talk to him, I just say I want to watch a box set. But at least you can zone out from what is happening around the world and you can watch something completely different. I watched Gino, Fred and Gordon last week travelling around America and it was totally easy to watch and it made me switch off and made me smile. So doing something that you enjoy, it might be speaking to your friends when you go home, it might be going for a walk, but just trying to do something every day that makes you smile because when everything feels really hard, it's really important that you try and do something to make yourself feel a little bit better. Um, eating well, um, we do. We did notice that there was a question about that, about providing food, and, and maybe Janice will speak about that afterwards. But just trying to, I mean, it's difficult, but you know, not eating uh, crap all the time. I, I do it. I had, you know, we all do it. But just trying to have plenty of fruits and vegetables to try and keep your body working as well as possible. Um, trying to avoid 
too much alcohol or too much stimulation in the form of coffee or caffeine because for all you get a, a big high you also get a bit of a dip afterwards so um, these are just general advice things that we talk about trying to get some fresh air I don't know if you walk to and from work or you can walk an extra wee bit to the bus stop or the train but just trying to get some fresh air and again listening to the birds seeing, feeling the sunshine you know it just takes your mind off the day that you've had um, and finally I think it's important that um, when you're coming out of work is trying to think about the day that you've had this is something that GGMC uh, the health service in Glasgow had put a tweet about was trying to think as you're leaving work of three things that you were grateful for and three things that you were proud of doing that day um, and just reminding yourself that you're doing a really hard job and you're doing an amazing job of it so do that and try and check in with each other when you're leaving and just saying how are you doing almost as you're walking out the door so that you can have that bit of chat and maybe just let the day go as much as you can and um, before you go home so that when you're at home you're trying to enjoy that relaxation time and the time that you do get with your families because I know you work really long shifts so um, just trying to almost put a full stop at the end of your day I know it's difficult I'm the same, the patient, my care homes were phoning me late at night over the last few days and it just takes you right back into that situation. But as soon as that call was done, I was just trying to put it to bed because you can't be there all day, every day. You know, you've got great colleagues, you're all working as teams and you're all doing a brilliant job. So that's my spiel about well-being. <laughs> Wait, is there anything you would add to that? Um, no, I, I would absolutely agree with Jude around about I hope that you can be proud of what you are achieving, uh, managing to be at work in amongst all of this and managing to get continue to provide homes for people who are vulnerable and in need of that care and compassion that you're continuing to give. So I would absolutely hope that you can be proud of yourselves around about that. I think it's important to tell somebody if you're not feeling great in yourself so if it's okay to feel sad it's okay to feel a bit low because this isn't normal but I would really really encourage you to share with someone if those feelings start to build and they're affecting you every day, whether you're in work or not. So if you're starting to feel a bit overwhelmed by feelings of sadness, lowness, anxiety, and you're being preoccupied by thoughts like that, please, please speak to someone. I would encourage you to speak to a colleague, to a manager, to someone you would trust. But I would also remind you that your GPs are open, very much open, and I would please encourage you to make contact if you're starting to feel a bit overwhelmed by thoughts. I have to say, I think we're all probably feeling a bit more emotional than normal. Mm -hmm. um, I think it's just around the enormity of what's happening. So if you feel that that's spilling into your life all the time, please, please speak to someone. I can't emphasise that enough. We would much, much rather know if someone's feeling anxious and worried all the time than to allow that to slip because it'll impact on your ability to care for others. It'll impact on your family life, but it'll have a significant impact on your health and well-being now and in the future. So please, please reach out if you're starting to feel at all that things are getting on top of you and you're not quite managing. And Karen, are there things from the from an employer point of view in HR that yeah. you can offer and help? Yeah, absolutely. I mean, I, I would absolutely back up, you know, everything that's been said there in terms of, um, you know, trying to kind of cope and, and look after yourselves. Um, I mean, within um, Glasgow, um, that you have access to um, support through um, workplace options. Um, and um, there's also a helpline that has been set, set up as well um, that um, that you, you would have access to and, and I'm in the process of pulling together 
a number of um, sort of different supports um, that, that will be shared with, with all of you and, and uh, you might f find some of that helpful to, to tap into. Um, but, um, you know, as has been said, there's a lot of, um, if, if you're feeling, you know, a bit overwhelmed, then there, there, there's certainly help there. there. There is access to a counsellor um, instantly via workplace options. Um, and like I said, there's the, the helpline number um, that has been set up as well. Um, if you just feel it would be helpful to, to, to kind of talk, talk to someone. Um, so yeah, so there's so there's a lot, there is a lot around. Um, and I had recently um, contacted um, Anne Gallina um, to just try and get some staff feedback in terms of looking at um, you know, how we can support you more um, to be at work. Um, at, you know, is there anything, any further supports that you think that would be would be beneficial um, to you? So you know, I'm interested to to, to get some feedback um, so that we can help you more. Um, yeah, it's easy enough for me to say that we've got the employee health and wellbeing resource and we've got a number of different resources there, but, you know, I want to try and make it as specific um, to your needs for right now um, and, um, and, you know, uh, any, any kind of feedback you can give, um, you know, then please just get in touch with me directly. I appreciate that it's quite a difficult topic to, to potentially talk about, um, especially in this sort of almost artificial um, situation, I guess, with using the webinars. But I think uh, Dr. Judith Marshall is going to start coming out to some of the units, hopefully, over the next few weeks. So with Claire's. With so Claire's, yeah. that's fantastic. Mm -hmm. So getting the chance to potentially see folks from a distance but face to face I think will be easier for folks to be able to talk about some of these things and, and bring that to life and, and some real examples as well so we're really appreciative of that additional offer of support to all of the units um, at this time so um, but, but equally if there are any questions about that just now then happy to take, take them any extra questions around how you're coping um, like how you manage, how you're, you're personally managing anxiety, it's even a good tip that any of you might have to share. Okay, no, I appreciate that, that's absolutely fine. So just moving on in terms of the questions, there was also that question that was around food and drink and knowing that the shops are uh, really difficult to navigate your way through just now and that we're working shift patterns etc and there was a question of whether it would be an option to be able to look at getting something like a vending machine. What I'll say is that we'll take that back to our um, assistant chief officer for some further consideration in terms of uh, what additional supports we could put in place. What we are finding though is that logistically to get any deliveries just now is something new or different is really difficult as well. Um, so getting something like a vending machine might be really, really difficult to, to get contractually, but equally there might be other things that we could look at in terms of using purchase cards to get some extra food and drink in or whatever to be able to make sure that folks have got the resources that they need at a time like that. I don't know if any of the other service managers have got suggestions that they would want to add to that, but we can pick that up offline uh, in a separate conversation because um, I do appreciate that folk need a break and they need to be able to hydrate and get out and uh, drinking I would think yeah. is probably the most important thing over that especially the 12 hour shifts and making sure that you're well hydrated and have always got a, a drink beside you sort of thing is really probably important at this, at this time. Um, okay. There was a question about taking temperatures of staff, which is maybe again something that would help alleviate anxieties in knowing that actually I'm, I'm okay today. Um, is it a good idea to take people's temperatures um, on a daily basis before they head into work? I, I'm, I'm going to look to my health professionals. <laughs> <laughs> I think different places are doing different things. I know my private um, care homes are checking the temperature of staff and if families are visiting at the end of life, they get their temperatures checked, but we don't do it in the surgery, and I know Claire, they don't do it in the hospital. So 
I, I guess, therefore, maybe the evidence isn't supportive of that. I'm not sure. I can't I answer that directly. Health Protection Scotland at the moment are not advising that we absolutely have to do that. Mm -hmm. So I guess it is one of those things that um, some places, are, and you see on TV that some people are using uh, thermometers and other, other places obviously aren't. So mm -hmm. it's, it's not the clearest. I suppose that's maybe a question for us to raise with public health. Yeah. Uh, I'm quite happy to do that. I think if you're not feeling well, you know, if you have got a cough or you're just not feeling 100% or you feel a bit warm, then it might be an idea to ask somebody to check your temperature, but I'm not sure how effective it is just checking temperatures because that only really gives you a snapshot of that moment in time, do you know? Your temperature could go up or down within eh, a few minutes after that, so it only gives you... Um, an idea at that moment so you, you're really better if you're feeling hot or you're feeling not quite right shivery shaky kind of way that you get someone to check your temperature then I certainly know someone that has had COVID and recovered and he the whole time didn't have a temperature uh, he was symptomatic with a cough and that was what triggered him to be tested um, but he the whole time didn't develop a temperature so I think checking a temperature alone doesn't safeguard you of thinking that everything's okay mm -hmm. you have to be thinking about the cough as well and how you're feeling mm -hmm. I suppose some of that links to testing so the other question that often comes up is what will happen in terms of supporting our residents to be tested but I hope with folks will have seen in the news in the last few days that there's changes there and that we should be getting testing much more readily available um, within our care homes over the next few days. So that should hopefully help alleviate some of that fear as well. Um, there was certainly there's some questions around um, isolating our residents and, what, and again that and it's maybe anecdotal or people have heard from other places that the isolated all of the residents in their bedrooms as a precaution is that something that we should be considering i'm not sure what the current guidelines are i think and the group of patients you look after that would be very difficult i would imagine um it's certainly been difficult in the care homes that we work in it's hard to isolate people and people are becoming distressed <laughs> if we do try to do that so I'm not sure if there's a one-size-fits-all answer to that, Janice. I'm, I'm not 100% sure, I have to say. No, and again, it's the Health Protection Scotland guidance that, we've, that yeah, we're yeah. trying to live by, if you like, yeah. and that certainly doesn't say at this point in yeah. time that that yeah. would necessarily be um, required or potentially helpful, I guess. Yeah. As you say, given the level of stress and distress behaviours, that that could mm -hmm. um, actually make worse. Make worse. Mm -hmm. yeah, you were already got... I think residents who are more stressed about not seeing families and yeah. not having normal like you know their normal life and mm -hmm. if you're then saying they're in their rooms I, I would worry about the physical and mental health effects of that mm -hmm. so we'll wait and see what health protection scotland yeah. says one final question was that, that on a personal level some staff are feeling that they're also not able to see their, their children their grandchildren um, and that that in itself has an effect on the mood because then we can have a normal, if you like, home life. Are there any, is there any advice that you can provide in that respect? Yeah, I mean, I've got grandparents who aren't seeing their grandchildren and we try and do FaceTime or, or Zoom calls with them. Yeah. Like my mum read the kids a book the other night because she just hasn't seen them for six weeks and she's used to seeing them three days a week. So just trying little things like that, that's what we've done. We've, we've not gone so far as to be two metres away from them because I would just worry that the children would find that difficult. But um, over FaceTime, it's been a wee bit easier. What do you think? Yeah, I would agree. I think that's one of the hardest things for us, isn't it? Mm -hmm. Is around not seeing people that uh, you would normally see regularly and who are important to you. And then people that you don't live with not being able to give them a cuddle when you see them I think is, is something that's really difficult for all of us um, but not being able to see grandchildren I think is a huge thing so if there's any way to link up virtually um, then by you know I think that's a good thing to think about and even that sort of the social distance I know from my mother's 82 so I, I thought I've found is that I, I might need I'm doing a shop and things like that and as I drop it off for her 
it's trying to get a look and check that she's okay in other ways because she's fine yeah. and the touch wood that she's there's no symptoms of COVID. But two weeks ago she did have cellulitis in her legs mm-hmm. and I was able to peer at her and go, wait a minute, Mum, that's not quite right mm-hmm. and still make that NHS uh, twenty four call etc. Mm-hmm. So then get her on an antibiotic. So it's it's other things in life are going on yes. as well mm-hmm. as mm-hmm. not a, a yeah. over and above co- yeah. uh, coronavirus as, yeah. as such, I suppose. Yeah. So there's something about actually um, Acknowledging that for yourself, but that 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 would already have been a difficult situation for me to to deal with in my home life. But coronavirus only made that a hundred times worse. Yeah. I feel like yeah, yeah. yeah. so it's, it's it's difficult, isn't it? Um. Okay. Do folks have any questions um for for us then around that? Got an extra question here, John. Yeah, could we ask a question, Janice? Oh, hang on, we've got Hawthorne first, um, Janice, and right, then we'll okay. come to you. Thanks. Well, it's just um, from a lot of my colleagues and myself, we're just a bit anxious because sometimes we're having to walk across units, different units, and some units have its own voice. Oh, sorry, Shirley, I, I can't. We're not able to make that out. I don't know if you can help and uh, make it clearer and get the microphone closer. Or... Right, okay. Yeah, I can hear you. Right, from start, uh, my colleague and myself were a bit anxious because right now within the home there are some units that have cases, there are some units that don't have cases. And they're a bit uh, anxious because sometimes you have to walk within different units. And some staff are anxious because they feel they might walk in a unit that has a confirmed case and then <clears throat> come back to the unit that doesn't have any confirmed cases and they're just quite anxious. I'm really sorry, we've not been able to make out that again. I, am, I don't know if there's a... It's very, it seems to be really quiet, Jim Hawthorne. I don't know if there's a way that you can turn that up or, or if you can sure submit the question. Okay. No, it's right up, Donna. Is it right up, Donna? Shanyan, if you can help with that, or even can I can I suggest that you make put the question to us and we can get it answered after the call? I'll send it over. That would be sorry about that. That's just it's the technology. I could show you some yeah. 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 Or like. Yeah, it's just there's not microphones there, but we'll get them by next week. Okay. Uh, hopefully that will make all the difference, I think. It so will, I think Jan, Jan Shipchi had a question from Riverside. Yep, there you go. Hello there. What I would be asking is, what advice would you give for um, seniors in management to support their staff in regards to grieving for okay. our residents? Is that staff that are grieving? Yes. So what can management do to support yeah. Yep. Yes. I think... Um, are we, is that around when your residents are dying? Is that the question around about supporting staff? Yeah, yeah that's correct. Yeah. yeah, okay. Yeah, no, that's really, really important and very, um, a really valuable question and a very uh, important thing to think at, about as managers and colleagues, particularly if, you are experiencing a much greater numbers of deaths than you normally would. Every life matters, so no matter uh, whether it's one resident that dies or if you're experiencing several residents dying, it's extremely important that you you take time to acknowledge the grief that you'll also experience. I think when thinking about grief, We'll all respond in different ways, but as managers, it's important to stop and check in with staff about how they're feeling. And that doesn't have to be for a certain period of time, because many people will experience the effects of grief at different times. And sometimes it can be compounded by something that's happening in our own lives out of work as well. You know, I'm acutely aware that when you come to work, you're completely professional and you know, you're there doing the best you can for your residents. 
but you're still a partner, a mum, a sister, you've still got a life out with that, a friend, and you'll be aware of things happening to people in your home life at the same time as carrying out your professional duties. So please recognise within your staff, if you start to see people struggling through grief, and that might, it can manifest in many ways. Some people can become quiet and withdrawn. Some people can become frustrated. I think some people can feel guilty and express feelings of guilt. I've come across people who feel, you know, was it, you know, was it me that potentially passed on the coronavirus? There's lots of feelings around about guilt. And please, please try to avoid the burdening of guilt. I always say, for me, guilt's a completely wasteless emotion. There is so many other emotions that we can focus on. But actually, if we're to take on board feeling guilty, then it's going to, it's going to really impact on our well-being and our ability to care for all the residents who are going to recover and, and, and do well. So I would please, please encourage you to watch for your staff and see if there's anybody who you can see is starting to struggle from their experiences at work or their experiences at home. And I'll come back to that, doing that for each other as well. Um, it's about watching for your colleagues and seeing some changes in them. Not everybody feels comfortable speaking up to their manager. We all have a responsibility to look after each other as well. So, you know, being a very approachable manager is important, but also being a supportive colleague is key in this. Um, because we will all, I mean, many people are experiencing a degree of grief anyway around about being separated from family and loved ones and also having to cancel plans around about special events. So there's lots of things that are happening to all of us that will be compounded by the loss that you're experiencing at work. I mentioned when we did the WebExes last week, you know, I, I think the relationship you build with your residents is, is fantastic. Um, as a nurse mainly based in the hospital now, we don't get those same relationships. And I think what you get with your residents is, is fabulous. But the cost on you will be that that care that you've given them, you will then feel that loss even greater when they die. And I would just really, really encourage you to take peace from the fact that you were able to care for them well towards the end of their life if you have residents dying. And please remember that you've done the best by them. So on days you feel low and on days you feel your staff feeling low, please stop and acknowledge the good things that you are doing and look after each other in that way. Thanks very much, Claire. That's really helpful. Um, any other questions from any other units? Okay then, everyone, I think we've covered more or less everything that was on the question sheets that were submitted. Hopefully people have found that helpful. We'll get that question from Shirley um, from Hawthorne and we'll get that answered and shared for everyone as well so that folks are getting the, the benefit of, the, of whatever that question was. Really sorry about that. Um, and thanks again for your time this afternoon. Um, hopefully you found that helpful um, and help us moving on from here on in. Thanks very much.